All right, so I'm gonna do another one of my conditional statements lessons. And today we're gonna focus on if, only if, mainly, and then we will brief, or briefly talk about what does if and only if mean. So to get started, just a little bit of review. What are conditional statements? So conditional statements are what we oftentimes refer to as our if then statements. So even though they can have other words other than just, hey, if this happens, then this, we oftentimes call them if then statements. Um, sometimes we'll see these, especially on logic games and it will be if A, then B. So on LR, what we refer to this as is this first one is our sufficient condition. So I'll go ahead and write sufficient. And then our B condition here is our necessary condition. So what do these words mean? This is something that a lot, a lot, a lot of people struggle with. So if statement, so if we have A, so if A, that is sufficient. So sufficient ends in a T and I like to think of it as a trigger since it's that arrow it triggers the B condition because if we don't have B, then we cannot have A. So what this looks like is, I'm gonna go ahead and draw it once more. If we have A, then we have to have B. Oftentimes we hear what's called the contrapositive, which means the exact same thing. It's just written in a different way. So this is where we have to flip it and reverse it. So whenever we flip it, that means that the B is going to come first and the A is going to come second because we have to flip it. And whenever we say reverse it, that means we have to reverse the signals here. So if we, so our contrapositive would be if we don't have B, then we cannot have A. So if I were to think of this as an example, if I said, if I am from Ohio, then I am from the United States because being from Ohio is enough to trigger knowing that I'm also from the United States. But if we flip this and reverse it of the contrapositive, isn't it fair to also say that if I am not from the United States, then oh, I cannot be from Ohio? Absolutely, because we have to flip it and reverse it. Oftentimes what a lot of us wanna do on here is instead of just um, flip, instead of flipping and reversing it, we just want to do one. So we just flip it, but we don't reverse it. But if I were just from the United States, is that enough to trigger that I'm from Ohio? No. And so that's what we call a false contrapositive where you flipped it and we didn't reverse it like we needed to. So that's just a little bit of review of what we're talking about here. And oftentimes, I think it's easier for people to learn conditional statements on logic games because you know to look for it, but it happens in LR all the time too. So for example, here's a conditional statement, even though we um, are not using the actual words if and then. We're using a different one, which is every. Oh. So if we're using this, what does this mean? That every Christmas, Rachel gets a puppy. Go ahead and hit pause if you want and try this one for yourself. Okay, so every Christmas. So what does this mean? This means that if it is Christmas time, we know that Rachel gets a puppy. Um, that'll, that'll be my Rachel gets a puppy. What is our contrapositive here? Remember, we have to flip it and reverse it. So if Rachel does not get a puppy, what does that mean? It just means that it's not Christmas. So what the what we want to do is oftentimes what we emotionally like what we do on the test is we'll say, oh well, Rachel got a puppy, therefore it must be Christmas. But that's but we didn't reverse it. So can you see the difference between here and here? Just because Rachel got a puppy, maybe Rachel gets a puppy every day of the week. Maybe she is a foster parent for puppies. We don't know. But Rachel gets a puppy. That does not mean it's Christmas because remember, you have to flip it and reverse it. All right, so what we're going to talk about today, which happens on the I hope it happens on the LR section a lot, is the difference between if and only if. 
So remember, if introduces our sufficient condition. So if introduces our sufficient condition. So remember, that's our first condition. And only if introduces our necessary condition. Um, how I like to remember this is if doesn't have the N. So the N and the only also starts with or necessary. So that's how I remember that only if introduces the necessary condition or the second one. So sufficient, if it rains, I will bring a jacket. So what does this one look like? So this is saying if it rains, so remember if introduces our sufficient and our sufficient goes on the left. I'll go ahead and draw this up here. Our sufficient goes on the left because remember sufficient ends in a T and that introduces our trigger to guarantee our C. So if it rains, I will bring a jacket. So we know if it's raining, I will for sure bring a jacket. Now let's think about what our contrapositive is for this. Remember we have to flip it and then reverse it. So if I do not have a jacket on, because I, that means that it's not raining. Oh. Because if introduces our sufficient. All right, so then on the opposite end, we have this, so I will do this. Remember, if introduces that it, the sufficient, so it's raining, therefore I will bring a jacket, flip it and reverse it. So if I do not bring a jacket, that means that it's not raining. All right, so now let's talk about one of my favorite um, conditional reasonings, only if, because you'll see this all the time now, only if introduces are necessary. So remember, this is on the right side now. So I wear rain boots only if it's raining. So our only if, so that means that if, if it is raining now becomes our necessary condition, does it go on the left side or the right side of our arrow? Yes, so the N with the necessary, it's gonna go on the right side of our arrow. So we're gonna put it over here. So what is our sufficient then? Wearing rain boots, absolutely. Because if I wear rain boots, that means that it's raining because I only wear rain boots when it is raining. So if it's not raining, I do not wear rain boots. Now, the tricky part with this one is, is does that mean that when it's raining I will for sure wear rain boots. No, because remember, you always, always, always have to flip this and reverse this. So maybe when it, so being raining is not enough for me to guarantee that I'm wearing rain boots because that's a false contrapositive. So only if introduces our necessary condition, if introduces our sufficient. All right, and then lastly, oh, and if you want a good LR question to talk about this, check out practice test 22, section um, two, number 25. It's a great question that really tests your understanding of knowing that if versus only if. And then lastly, I just wanna to touch on, okay, so then what's the difference between only if and if and only if? So this first one, I wear rain boots only if it's raining. We know that only has the N, so it's going to introduce our necessary condition. So I wear rain boots only if it's raining. So if I'm wearing rain boots, that is sufficient because sufficient ends in a T and it starts our trigger, sufficient to know that it is raining. So if it's not raining, the only thing that I know is that I'm not wearing rain boots. But what about this if and only if here? What does this mean? This means that I wear rain boots if and only if it is raining. So this means this is the only time that it happens. 
So nothing else can allow us to wear rain boots because if I'm wearing rain boots, that means that, it, that it's raining. But if it's not, but this is the only time, there's nothing else that will allow me to wear rain boots. Hang on one second, let me clear this. All right, so let me go ahead and erase this a little bit. So only if essentially, because this only happens when wet, or since this is the only time that it happens, is bringing in a biconditional arrow. So this means that if one's happening, we know the other is happening. So if and only if is a, so we go both ways. So rain boots and raining. So if it's not, if I'm not wearing rain boots, it cannot be raining. Or if it's not raining, I cannot be wearing rain boots. So I hope that this was helpful on understanding a little bit more of conditional logic, really focus just on only if and if honestly today if you're practicing LR and I'll continue to make some of these videos of some tough um, conditional statements that people tend to struggle with. And hopefully I'm going to put this on. We're going to go through a lot of these. Today we talked about if and then we talked about only if. Let me go ahead and draw on here. We talked about if and only if. Um, we've mentioned every, but I'm going to go ahead and continue to really focus on some of these more challenging ones. We'll definitely get into like unless or requires or until, just so that we can have a better understanding of understanding these phrases so that we can get faster on our LR sections. Hope this helps.